BBC School Report. Um, right now I am interviewing Barbara Grossman from the Maidenhead Synagogue. We are going to be talking about Holocaust Memorial Day. How do you feel about the Holocaust Memorial Day? I think it's a very good idea that the, there should be a, a marking of, um, of the day to, to remember. Though, as happens in the community here, we remember the people who died in the Holocaust and the events around it at uh, the, um, on Tisha B'Av, which falls around about end of July, August time. But I think it's a very good idea that there should be some marking. What do you think about Holocaust survivors um, talking to young people about their stories? I think it's essential, um, really important. And I appreciate that um, for several decades after the war, there were many people, like I have a, uh, an adopted father on, on kibbutz who didn't want to talk about it. He had survived many of the, the war years um, just being out in, in the forests was eventually captured uh, and in a concentration camp he survived um, as did his girlfriend later wife and for decades he didn't want to talk about it but somewhere late 70s he realized there was a new generation that had no idea about the holocaust and that's when he started speaking and i agree i think it's very important to talk I about i think that's it. important too so what do you know about the holocaust and ha and the memorial day what do you know about it I think I would keep you for, for hours and hours talking about it. Let me just say from, from personal um, experience, um, both of my parents were born in Germany. My father in the east, in a town called Leipzig, um, and my mother in Wuppertal, from the well, west of West Germany. And my father, for various reasons, he, he left Germany together with his two brothers in 1936. Um, they had British passports because their, grand, uh, their father had been born here. I think more importance, more relevance for regarding the Holocaust is my mother's story. Um, she left Germany in April 1939 because her parents, possibly her father in particular, I think had finally woken up to the fact that Hitler was not some somebody who was just, it was a passing thing, you know, that for many years her, her family I suspect like other German Jews, had felt more German than the Germans. They, they felt totally integrated into German society and, and being Jewish was a secondary um, uh, element of their lives. There was a, finally a waking up. They managed to get my mother out. Um, she was 18 years old at that point, um, too old for the kinder transport. They managed to get her out as a maid, so she became a maid in service in London with Lord Melchard's uh, family. Uh, her younger sister didn't survive, the, they couldn't get her onto the kinder transport. Um, it was too late. And mum's older brother, um, he was rounded up and uh, put into a camp on Kristallna on the 9th of November, 1938. And his then girlfriend went to the Gestapo and pleaded with them to release him. And at that point, the, the feeling was they just wanted the Jews out of Germany. And so she pleaded with them and said, you know, she promised that she would uh, get him out of Germany. They had applied before then, I think, for visas for America, but they hadn't come through. She managed to get him uh, out of the camp and uh, they went, uh, they got out of Germany and they went to Shanghai and they spent the war years in Shanghai. So. I have lots of other stories about the Holocaust. I think that those are the most personal things because of uh, the family experience. And it definitely affected uh, the upbringing of, of my brother and, and myself. Um, certainly for many, many years, my mother didn't want to talk about uh, Germany at all, nothing to do with uh, the, the war. And whereas I was always was fascinated by, by war films, loved to watch them, she didn't want to see anything uh, to do with that. Um, didn't want to go back to Germany. Um, so yes, there's a great impact. And so I'm delighted that you're asking these questions. Thank you. A lot of mum's, mum's family were, um, did not survive, they all were, were killed in, in camps. But two cousins managed to get out 
and they um, were nurses in this country. They had no formal nursing qualifications, but, but I think today you'd call them carers. So that's how they managed to, to, to uh, come here. And the British government was very, very welcoming, of, and the people here were, were wonderful. They, they, they allowed people to come in, and they came and they worked. They, they knew that they had to, the way to survive here was to be, try to become integrated in, in society and work. So there was my mum as a maid and uh, her, her cousins as uh, nurses. And, and my father, he, um, as soon as he could, he went into the British Army. So, and in fact, he, uh, was, was, um, he changed his surname because his, his commanding officer insisted that uh, he, he must change his surname because it was Goldman and they thought that was too Jewish a surname and so he changed it to Gordon. So and that was my maiden name. Is there anything else you would like to add to that? I would happily speak for, for days about it but I think that sort of gives you a, a, a taster and, and I thank you and I'm, as I said I'm, I'm pleased that you're asking uh, these sorts of questions. Thank you very much. This year, year nine met a Holocaust survivor called Rudy Oppenheimer. He talked about his early childhood and his Holocaust experiences. What stood out to you most about listening to the Holocaust survivors? His memory, like how he could remember it all, like how it was like yesterday. Yeah. And um, what did you find most interesting uh, that he said? How he lived in like loads of places around Europe. Oh, I thought it was very interesting, and there was a good life lesson to be taken away from it. Then we will benefit quite a lot from it because it's really much different from learning in the classroom. We, uh, we got first person views on what happened in the Holocaust. So if you ask me to write an exam right now on what happened, I get more of like an insight as to how they felt about it. So I learned more about you know how they felt about the Jews and the Nazis. When he talked about the uh, potatoes uh, in the pot, when he had to take them out in order to survive and eat them, um, he had to sacrifice other people, not getting the potatoes, but um, he, he had to do that in order to survive. That yeah. really shocked me. I feel that I could understand his pain and grief through his talking and facial expressions. And I particularly knew that I didn't really know at first what the camps were like, but he explained it very well. As we've seen, the Holocaust survivor's story has given people much to think about.